The Camino Real de Tierra Adentro, Spanish for Royal Road of the Interior Land was a 2,560-kilometre long trade route between Mexico City and San Juan Pueblo, New Mexico, from 1598 to 1882. In 2010, 55 sites and five existing World Heritage sites along the Mexican section of the route became an entry on the UNESCO World Heritage List. Those sites include historic cities, towns, bridges, haciendas and other monuments along the 1,400 km route between the historic center of Mexico City independent World Heritage Site and the town of Valle de Allende, Chihuahua. The 404-mile section of the route within the United States was proclaimed as a part of the National Historic Trail System on 13 October 2000. El Camino Real de Tierra Adentro National Historic Trail is overseen by both the National Park Service and the U.S. Bureau of Land Management with aid from El Camino Real de Tierra Adentro Trail ASSOC, also known as CARTA. A portion of the trail near San Acacia, New Mexico was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 2014. History Pre-Columbian Long before the Europeans arrived, the various indigenous tribes and kingdoms that had arisen throughout the northern central steppe of Mexico had established the route that would later become the Camino Real de Tierra Adentro as a major hunting and trade route. The route connected the peoples of the Valley of Mexico with those of the north through the exchange of products such as turquoise, obsidian, salt and feathers. By the year 1000, a flourishing trade network existed from Mesoamerica to the Rocky Mountains. European incursion Once the great Tenochtitlan was subdued, the conquistadors began a series of expeditions with the purpose of expanding their domains and obtaining greater wealth for the Spanish crown. Their initial efforts led them to follow the established trails of the natives who exchanged goods between the north and the south. In April 1598, a group of military scouts led by Juan de Oñate, the newly appointed colonial governor of the province of Nuevo Mexico, became lost in the desert south of Paso del Norte while seeking the best route to the Rio del Norte. A local Indian they had captured named Mompel drew in the sand a map of the only safe passage to the river. This group arrived at the Rio del Norte just south of present-day El Paso and Ciudad Juarez in late April, where they celebrated the Catholic Day of Ascension on April 30, 1598 before crossing the river. They then mapped and extended the route to what is now Española, where Oñate would establish the capital of the new province. This trail became the Camino Real de Tierra Adentro, the northernmost of the four main royal roads. The Caminos Real, that linked Mexico City to its major tributaries in Acapulco, Veracruz, Audiencia, Guatemala, and Santa Fe. After the Pueblo Revolt of 1680, which pushed the Spanish out of Nuevo Mexico, the Spanish crown decided not to abandon the province altogether but instead maintained a channel to the province so as not to completely abandon their remaining subjects in the province. The Viceroyalty organized a system, the so-called Conducta, to supply the missions, presidios and northern ranchos. The Conducta consisted of wagon caravans that departed every three years from Mexico City to Santa Fe along the Camino Real de Tierra Adentro. The trip required a long and difficult journey of six months, including two to three weeks of rest along the way. Many were the uncertainties that the Conducta and other travelers faced. River floods could force weeks of waiting on the banks until the caravan could wade through. At other times, prolonged droughts in the area could make water scarce and difficult to find. The most feared section of the journey was the crossing of the Jornada del Muerto beyond El Paso del Norte, a hundred kilometers of open desert without any oases to hydrate the men and beasts. Beyond the sustenance needs, the greatest danger to the caravan was that of local assaults. Groups of bandits roamed throughout the territory and threatened the caravan from the current state of Mexico to the state of Querétaro, seeking articles of value. And from the southern part of Zacatecas onward to the north, the greatest threat was the native Chichimecas, which would become more likely to attack as the caravan progressed further north. The main objective of the Chichimecas was horses, but they would also often take women and children. 
The presidios along the way would provide relays of troops to provide additional protection to the caravans, and at night in the most dangerous areas, the caravans would form a circle with their wagons with the people and animals inside. The Camino Real was actively used as a commercial route for 300 years, from the middle of the 16th century to the 19th century, mainly for the transport of silver extracted from the northern mines. During this time, the road was continuously improved, and over time the risks became smaller as haciendas and population centers emerged. Topic: 18th century. During the 18th century, the sites along the Camino Real de Tierra Adentro increased significantly. The area between the villas of Durango and Santa Fe came to be known as the Chihuahua Trail. The Villa of San Felipe el Real today city of Chihuahua, established in 1709 to support the surrounding mines, became the most important commercial center and financial area along this segment. The Villa of San Felipe Neri de Albuquerque, today Albuquerque New Mexico, was founded in 1706 and it also became an important terminal. Because of its defensive position on the Camino Real, the Villa de Albuquerque became the center of commercial exchange between Nuevo Mexico and the rest of New Spain during the 18th century, trading cattle, wool, textiles, animal skins, salt, and nuts. This exchange occurred mainly with the mining cities of Chihuahua, Santa Barbara and Peral. And of course, Paso del Norte became another major terminal on the route. In 1765 the population of El Paso del Norte was estimated to be 2,635 inhabitants, which created what was then the largest urban center on the northern border of New Spain. El Paso del Norte became an important center of agriculture and rancheria, known for its wines, brandy, vinegar and raisins. In the 18th century, the Spanish crown authorized the establishment of fairs along the Camino Real to promote commerce although some form of these had already been existing for some time prior. Some of the most important fairs along the Camino Real included the Fair de San Juan de los Lagos in Jalisco, the Fair de Saltillo, and the Fair de Chihuahua, which was of great importance to Nuevo Mexico merchants. The Fair de Taos was also an important annual event where the Comanches and the Utes traded weapons, ammunition, horses, agricultural products, furs, and meats with the Spanish. Spain at the same time maintained a monopoly with the products of its northern provinces, thus no trade occurred with the French colony in Louisiana. For the second half of the 18th century, the northern frontier of New Spain represented a fundamental interest for the Spanish Empire and its reformist policy, with the aim of ensuring Spanish sovereignty over its northern provinces, highly coveted geopolitically by other European powers, especially the English and the French. The Spanish crown labored to incorporate the natives into the social and economic welfare of its provinces and give them reasons to participate in the defense of the Spanish border. Thus, Captain Nicolas de la Fora assigned by the then Marquis of Ruby gives a description of the frontier of New Spain in his Viaje a los Presidios Internas de la América Septentrional, the product of an expedition that took place between 1766 and 1768. This expedition was part of a larger commission on the defensive issues and military capabilities entrusted by the Spanish crown to the Marquis of Ruby, to assess the tactical placement of the presidios, inspect troop readiness, review military regulations and propose what might be done to strengthen the government and the defense of the state. From its review, the Marquis proposed a line of presidios along the northern frontier of New Spain, to be established from the Gulf of Mexico to the Gulf of California to protect itself from the Utes, Apaches, Comanches, and Navajos. Don José de Galvez, special commissioner to New Spain for Charles III, promoted a Comandancia General de las Provincias Internas, General Commander of the Internal Provinces, for the northern provinces of New Spain. However, he also recognized that a long war with the natives would be impossible to win or sustain due to the lack of military resources in the area. With that view, he himself promoted the establishment of a strong peace in the provinces and a greater commercial presence in 1779. In 1786, the nephew of José de Galvez, Bernardo de Galvez, viceroy of New Spain published his instructions which included three strategies for dealing with the natives, continuing the military pressure on hostile and unaligned tribes, pursuing the formation of alliances with friendly tribes, and promoting economic dependency with those natives who had entered into peace treaties with the Spanish crown. 
In the last decade of the 18th century, a tenuous peace was achieved between the Spaniards and the Apache tribes as a result of the aforementioned administrative and strategic changes. As a consequence, commerce along the Camino Real greatly expanded with products from all over the world, including products from the other provinces of New Spain, brought in over land, European products brought in by the Spanish fleet, and even those that came from the Manila Galleon that arrived annually at Acapulco from the Western Pacific. As an example, for this time, the most typical products sold by the merchants in the city of Peral along the Chihuahua Trail included, platanchillos from Michoacán, gerilos from Cuautitlan of the state of Mexico, majolica from the state of Puebla, porcelain junks from China, and clay products from Guadalajara. Nineteenth century The 19th century brought many changes for both Mexico and its northern border. From the Napoleonic Wars at the start of the 19th century to the start of the Mexican War of Independence, the colonial government was unstable and struggled to continue sending resources to the northern provinces. This void led to the establishment of alternate suppliers and supply routes into those provinces. In 1807, American merchant and military agent Zebulon Pike was sent to explore the southwestern borders between the U.S. and New Spain with the intention to find a trail to bring U.S. commerce into Nuevo Mexico and Nueva Vizcaya Chihuahua. Pike was captured on 26 February 1807 by the Spanish authorities in northern Nuevo Mexico, who sent him on the Camino Real to the city of Chihuahua for interrogation. While Pike was in this city, he gained access to several maps of Mexico and learned of the discontent with Spanish domination. In 1821, after 11 years of struggle, Mexico gained its independence from Spain. The Camino Real maintained an important role in this period, since travelers brought communication about the events that were taking place in the center of the country to the towns and villages of the internal provinces. During the Mexican War of Independence, the Camino Real was used by both forces, rebels and royal forces. For example, after the liberator Miguel Hidalgo y Costilla launched the War of Independence, he used the road to retreat from the Battle of the Bridge of Calderón fought on the banks of the Calderón River 60 kilometers 37 miles east of Guadalajara in present-day Zapotlanejo, Jalisco northward, eventually arriving at the wells of Bajan in Coahuila where he was captured and executed by royal forces. Between 1821 and 1822, after the end of the War for the Independence of Mexico, the Santa Fe Trail was established to connect the U.S. territory of Missouri with Santa Fe. At first, U.S. merchants were arrested and imprisoned for bringing contraband into Mexican territory, however, the growing economic crisis in northern Mexico gave rise to an increased tolerance of this type of trade. In fact, the Santa Fe Trail Sendero de Santa Fe provided needed markets for local products such as cotton and manufactured products from New Mexico, so New Mexicans looked favorably on this new trade route. By 1827, a lucrative and commercial connection had been forged between Missouri, New Mexico and Chihuahua. In 1846, the dispute over the Texas-Mexico border with the United States gave rise to the subsequent invasion by U.S. military forces and the Mexican-American War began. One of these forces was commanded by the General Stephen Kearney, who traveled by the Santa Fe Trail to seize the capital of New Mexico. Another of the forces commanded by Colonel Alexander William Donovan defeated a small group of Mexican contingents on the Camino Real in the Los Brazitos area south of what is now Las Cruces, New Mexico. Donovan's forces went on to capture El Paso del Norte and, later, the city of Chihuahua. During 1846–1847, the Camino Real de Tierra Adentro became a path of continuous use, with American forces using it to travel into the interior of Mexico. On their journey, many American travelers kept journals and wrote home about what they saw as they traveled. One of the soldiers provided an estimate of the population of several cities along the Camino, including, Algodones, New Mexico with 1,000 inhabitants, Bernalillo with 500, Sandia Pueblo with 300 to 400, Albuquerque without an estimated number but extant for 7 or 8 miles along the Rio Grande, Rancho de las Placeras with 200 or 300, Tomé with 2,000, Socorro, described as a considerable city. Paso del Norte with 5,000 to 6,000, and Carazal, Chihuahua with 400 inhabitants. The soldiers even kept notes of the products, prices, and animals that they found on their journeys. 
With the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo signed in February 1848, the war officially ended, with Mexico ceding most of its northern territories to the U.S., including what are now the U.S. states of New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona, and California. At that time, the Camino Real de Tierra Adentro was divided forever between two countries, and over time many of its stories have faded or been lost to time, however, its cultural legacy remains today. Uses of the name and controversies The name is sometimes a source of confusion, since during the Viceroyalty of New Spain all roads passable by horse and cart were called Camino Real, and a significant number of roads throughout the Viceroyalty bore this designation. Similarly, all of the interior territories outside of Mexico City were once called Tierra Adentro, and particularly the northern parts of the kingdom. This is why the portion of the road between Querétaro City, and Saltillo was alternatively called La Puerta de Tierra Adentro, the Door of Tierra Adentro. There have historically been several designated Caminos Reals de Tierra Adentro throughout New Spain, perhaps the second most important one after the road to Santa Fe being the one that led out of Saltillo, Coahuila to the province of Texas. The U.S. state of New Mexico recently copyrighted its use of El Camino Real de Tierra Adentro", to protect its legal rights to the name in the U.S., regardless of the fact that the U.S. state of Texas has not pursued or promoted its own historical claim to the same. <laughs> <laughs> World Heritage Site The section of the road that runs through Mexican territory was identified for consideration by the United Nations World Heritage Committee for Education, Science and Culture UNESCO as a World Heritage List in November 2001, under the cultural criteria I and E, which referred to, I representing a masterpiece of the creative genius of man, and E being the manifestation of a considerable exchange of influences, during a specific period or in a specific cultural area, in the development of architecture or technology, monumental arts, urban planning or landscape design. 2010, UNESCO further validated the road's importance under criteria IV, offering an eminent example of a type of building, architectural, technological or landscape, that illustrates a significant stage of human history. Finally, on August 1, 2010, UNESCO designated this road as an officially recognized World Heritage Site, along with another 24 new sites from various countries of the world. The designation identified a core zone of 3,102 hectares with a buffer zone of 268,057 hectares distributed across 60 historical sites. UNESCO identified, recognized 60 sites along the road in their declaration of the road being a World Heritage Site. Five of them Mexico City, Querétaro City, Guanajuato City, San Miguel de Allende and Zacatecas had been separately recognized as a World Heritage Site in the past. It should be mentioned that the original historical route does not exactly match the route identified by UNESCO, since UNESCO's declaration omitted several sections of the historical route such as the portion that ran north of Valle de Allende in Chihuahua and the portion that ran through the famous Hacienda de San Diego del Geral de Barrio in the Mexican state of Guanajuato, a key point for the route, to cite two samples. For this reason, a possible expansion of the declaration has been proposed for the future. Currently, the Instituto Nacional de Antropología e Historia is conducting research to find and gather evidence for additional portions and sites of the original stretches of the historical road, such as bridges, pavements, haciendas, etc. that might be added to the original UNESCO designation. <laughs> Declared sites Mexico City and State of Mexico 1351-000, Historic Center of Mexico City 1351-001, Old College of San Francisco Javier in Tepotzotlan 1351-002, Aculco Town 1351-003, Bridge of Atongo 1351-004, Section of the Camino Real between Aculco and San Juan del Rio State of Hidalgo 1351-005, Templo and Exconvento de San Francisco in Tepeji del Rio de Ocampo and Bridge 
1351–006, section of the Camino Real between the bridge of La Colmena and the Hacienda de la Cañada. State of Querétaro 1351–007, historic center of San Juan del Rio 1351–008, Hacienda de Chichimaquias 1351–009, Chapel of the Hacienda de Buenavista 1351–010, Historic Center of Querétaro City. State of Guanajuato 1351–011, Bridge of El Fraile 1351–012, Antiguo Real Hospital de San Juan de Dios in San Miguel de Allende 1351–013, Bridge of San Rafael in Guanajuato City 1351–014, Bridge La Camada 1351–015, City of San Miguel de Allende and Sanctuario de Jesús Nazareno de Atotonilco 1351–016, Historic Center of Guanajuato City and its adjacent mines. State of Jalisco 1351–017, Historic Center of Lagos de Moreno and Bridge 1351–018, Historic Set of Ojuelos de Jalisco 1351–019, Bridge of Ojuelos de Jalisco 1351–020, Hacienda de Cienega de Mata 1351–021, Old Cemetery of Encarnación de Dios State of Aguascalientes 1351–022, Hacienda de Peñulas 1351–023, Hacienda de Cienegia 1351–024, Historic Center of the Aguascalientes City 1351–025, Hacienda de Pabellón de Hidalgo State of Zacatecas 1351–026, Chapel of San Nicolas Tolentino of the Hacienda de San Nicolas de Cuillas 1351–027, Town of Pinos 1351–028, Templo de Nuestra Señora de Los Angeles of the Town of Noria de Angeles 1351–029, Templo de Nuestra Señora de Los Dolores in Villa González Ortega 1351–030, Colegio de Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe de Propaganda Fide 1351–031, Historic Center of Sombrerete 1351–032, Templo de San Pantaleon Martyr in the town of Noria de San Pantaleon 1351–033, Sierra de Organos 1351–034, Architectural Set of the town of Chalchiwitz 1351–035, Section of the Camino Real between Ojo Caliente and Zacatecas 1351–036, Cave of Avalos 1351–037, Historic Center of Zacatecas City 1351–038, Sanctuary of Plateros. State of San Luis Potosi 1351–039, Historic Center of San Luis Potosi State of Durango 1351–040, Chapel of San Antonio of the Hacienda de Juanaguerra 1351–041, Churches in the town of Nombre de Dios 1351–042, Hacienda de San Diego de Navacoyan and Bridge del Diablo 1351–043, Historic Center of the Durango City 1351–044, Churches in the town of Cuencame and Cristo de Mapimi 1351–045, Chapel of the Refuge in the Hacienda de Cuadios 1351–046, Iglesia Principal of the town of San José de Avino 1351–047, Chapel of the Hacienda de la Inmaculada Concepción of Palmitos de Arriba 1351–048, Chapel of the Hacienda de la Limpia Concepción of Palmitos de Abajo 1351–049, Architectural Set of Nazas 1351–050, Town of San Pedro del Gallo 1351–051, Architectural Set of the Town of Mapimi 1351–052, Town of Inde 1351–053, Chapel of San Mateo of the Hacienda de San Mateo de la Zarca 1351–054, Hacienda de la Limpia Concepción of Canatillo 
1351-055, Templo de San Miguel in the town of Villa Ocampo 1351-056, section of the Camino Real between Nazas and San Pedro del Gallo 1351-057, Ojuela Mine 1351-058, Cave of Las Mulas de Molino State of Chihuahua 1351-059, Town of Valle de Allende Topic. Location Topic. United States Historic Trail From the Texas-New Mexico border to San Juan Pueblo north of Española, the original route at one point designated U.S. Route 85 in the U.S. but later superseded with U.S. Interstate Highways 10 and 25 has been designated as a national scenic byway called El Camino Real. Pedestrian, bicycle, and equestrian trails have been added to portions of the trade route corridor over the past few decades. These include the existing Paseo del Bosque Trail in Albuquerque and portions of the proposed Rio Grande Trail. Its northern terminus, Santa Fe, is a terminus also of the Old Spanish Trail and the Santa Fe Trail. Along the trail, parajes stopovers that have been preserved today include El Rancho de las Golondrinas. Fort Craig and Fort Selden are also located along the trail. Carta El Camino Real de Tierra Adentro Trail Association is a non-profit trail organization that aims to help promote, educate, and preserve the cultural and historic trail in collaboration with the National Park Service, the Bureau of Land Management, the New Mexico Department of Cultural Affairs and various Mexican organizations. Carta publishes an informative journal, Chronicles of the Trail, quarterly that provides people with further history and current affairs of the trail and what Carta, as an organization, is doing to help the trail. <laughs> Chihuahua Trail The Chihuahua Trail is the name used to describe this route as it passes from New Mexico through the state of Chihuahua to central Mexico. By the late 16th century, Spanish exploration and colonization had advanced from Mexico City northward by the Great Central Plateau to its ultimate goal in Santa Fe. Until Mexican independence in 1821, all communications between New Mexico and the rest of the world was restricted to this 1,500-mile trail. Over it came ox carts and mule trains, missionaries and governors, soldiers and colonists. When the Santa Fe Trail sprang up between Santa Fe and Missouri, traders from the United States extended their operations southward down the Chihuahua Trail and beyond to Durango and Zacatecas. Ultimately superseded by railroads in the 19th century, the ancient Mexico City Santa Fe Road was revived in the mid-20th century as one of the great automobile highways of Mexico. The part that runs from Santa Fe, New Mexico to El Paso, Texas, U.S. State Highway 85, pioneered by Franciscan missionaries in 1581, may be the oldest highway in the United States. See also El Camino Real California, The California Mission Trail El Camino Real de los Tejas, El Camino Real from Texas east to Louisiana Old San Antonio Road, a section of El Camino Real de los Tejas Scenic byways in the United States National Register of Historic Places listings in Socorro County, New Mexico